Picture this. You see a new sale and go to check if the game you've been wanting for months has been reduced. It has. You immediately snatch up the game like a Destiny player snatches up free bright dust. You install it, you load it up, and when it asks you to select a difficulty option, you pick easy. Fast forward a few hours and you've already cleared half the game with little to no challenge whatsoever. Steamrolling through content like a Destiny player steamrolls a Gambit map. Okay, I need to stop with the Destiny player jokes, this isn't even a Destiny video. At the end of the game, you find yourself $60 down with only 5 hours spent playing. Difficulty in video games is something I've had a very interesting relationship with in the past. On one hand, it makes sense to play on the easiest difficulty at all times, since you get to play all the content and don't risk smashing your $2,000 gaming setup in a fit of gamer rage. On the other hand though, playing on hard difficulty avoids the above situation, where you end up spending loads of money on a game just to play it for a ridiculously short amount of time. Now I've recently been getting into a not very well known game known as Dark Souls 3. Can you tell? Y you could probably tell. In fact, I've already spent over 24 hours playing and I'm only barely halfway through the game. Although Dark Souls probably isn't the best example here, since you can't control its difficulty, it still remains that you get a lot more value for your money playing a mind-numbingly difficult Souls game than most other modern AAA titles. Perhaps a better example is my experience with the Arkham games. The first Arkham game I played, Arkham Asylum, was absolutely fantastic, although I made one fatal mistake when playing through it for the first time. I didn't play it on hard mode. As a result, I spent little to no time on many of the game's supposedly challenging areas, bruising through the game with absolute ease. In total, I spent around seven and a half hours playing the game, which isn't bad, but I also neglected all of the collectibles and post-story content, which would have racked up a few more hours. However, when I got to the second game, I made the decision to start the game on hard difficulty. Now, I'll admit, the first couple of hours that I played, I wanted to smash a hole right through my wall every death I took. But over time, with each encounter, each stealth takedown, each puzzle I solved, I slowly mastered the game in a way I never did with the first one. That's not to say I started steamrolling through the game though. There were definitely a lot of road bumps that, although were frustrating at the time, also added to that looming plague timer. On top of this, I was even motivated enough to go hunting for some of the collectibles I missed when going through the game the first time. As it stands currently, I have over 15 hours on the second game. That's over twice as long just by playing hard mode rather than normal. Granted, the second game is marginally longer, but it's not significant enough to dismiss this as merely an interesting case study. And so this leads me on to my second point about video game difficulty. You actually end up experiencing a lot more of the game as a whole on hard difficulty rather than on easy. I'll use another of my favourite games, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night here, as another example. Within Bloodstained you collect shards, basically spells, and find or craft weapons, armour and accessories to aid you in your adventure. On harder difficulties, you're forced to max out your character in order to have a chance at beating the current boss fight. On easier difficulties, you can just breeze through the game using your loadout from the start of the game without even touching half of the stuff the game has to offer. For example, on my first playthrough of this game, I was barely even aware of the massive food crafting system in place that aims to boost your stats permanently through gathering specific ingredients and combining them. It's cooking, why did I not call it cooking? The system itself doesn't add a lot to the game, aside from giving you some help against the bosses, but finding the recipes and ingredients in the first place forces you to explore much more of the game than you ever have before. That meant backtracking through previous areas to find chests containing specific recipes. Similar points could be made for both weapons and spells. Harder difficulties just force you to explore what's on offer a lot more. In my experience, this meant using different weapon types such as whips and katanas instead of sticking to this one rapier I got from an enemy drop early into the game. Going back to the Batman games for a second, this concept can also be applied here. Throughout the first game, I don't remember a single time where I, say, used the backclaw to pull an enemy's gun out of their hands, or waited for minutes on a gargoyle statue to get the perfect inverted takedown. The combat mechanics for the two games are practically identical as far as I'm aware, yet I regard the combat and general gameplay of Arkham City as a lot better than Arkham Asylum. Sure, this could be biased since I preferred the second game in general, but the only difference between the two was that one was played mostly on normal mode, whereas the other was played entirely on hard mode. The catch to all this though, and some games suffer from this more than others, is the locking of difficulty options behind beating the game on a lower difficulty. Unfortunately, Bloodstained does this, meaning the first time playing you have to play on normal mode since the other two harder ones aren't even available to select. This is very upsetting, and very much limits the potential of the game for a lot of people, 
simply because the option isn't given. And yeah, I get that companies want you to replay their game on a harder difficulty once you're done. That much links back to my original point about playtime. But if you're going to make two harder difficulty options, at least make the easier of the two available from the start. Chances are you aren't going to sit and play through a game you played on easy for a second time on normal, let alone a third on hard, and let alone alone a fourth playthrough on the hardest difficulty the game has to offer. This brings me back to Dark Souls. Dark Souls is a very punishing, very challenging game. All Souls games are. They don't have a difficulty option because they understand the importance of challenge and how that results in more playtime and therefore enjoyment overall. Sure, some players will inevitably quit, but others will play the game in its entirety, using everything in their arsenal to experience the game to its fullest. And if they really, really enjoyed it, they might even engage in some of the extra activities the game has to offer, namely starting a character with no inherent benefits, or even dabbling in DLC packs. I don't believe every game should be like Dark Souls. I understand the utility of having lower difficulty options for players who maybe aren't as experienced in the art of gaming as your typical Souls enjoyer. However, if you feel like you've experienced that scenario where you buy a game only to spend 5 hours beating it, consider upping the difficulty. It might just turn that game from a decent experience to one of your favourite games of all time.